Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today I've got a super exciting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the Civivi Cogent, or at least that's how I'm gonna pronounce it. Uh, button lock, flipper, wow, there's so many reasons to be happy about this. Number one, that we have an interesting Civivi. I like Civivi, they make great knives, right? I've just been very like, okay, it's another, you know, it's another really good flipper with good, you know, materials for the money. Um, yeah, we have something interesting from Civivi now. We have a budget button lock flipper, right? A button lock from Civivi that actually is a flipper, right? The Elementum was kind of like, ah, oh, neat, but it needs something else. This is really cool, guys. I'm gonna link this right down below. This is this still falls into the category of budget knife on this channel. It gets real close to the top end, but yeah, it still falls in that category. So I will link it right down below for you guys to check out. Uh, that's entirely up to you. Thanks so much to Civivi for sending this in for review. Thanks to my generous patrons who are supporting me right now. There's a link for Patreon right down below. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Let's go ahead and get a measurement of this guy. Overall length of the cogent coming in at seven and three quarter inches overall. Um, now nah, it's like 7.85 inches. I'm almost certain that I'm mispronouncing the name of this knife. You're just going to have to bear with me. Let's go ahead and do some size comparisons up against the Ontario Rap Model 1 and the Ontario Rap Model 2. This is still what I'd call a full-size knife. It's very close to 8 inches overall. Definitely bigger than the Rat 2. Not quite as big as the Rat 1. How about up against the Spyderco PM2 and the Spyderco Para 3? Kind of the same thing again, it's just in between, right? Just resisting the typical Goldilocks analogy here. Uh, and last but not least, the Benchmade uh, Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hope, and the Benchmade Bug Out. A little tighter in here, but very, very, still the in-between, right? Let's go ahead and do carry profile. So, thickness. Action's very good on this guy, by the way. Uh, thickness up against the Spyderco Para 3. They did not counter countersink. The liners are not countersunk. So, we have the liners plus the G10 skills, making it a little thicker than the Spyderco Para 3. Uh, length and height up against the PM2 and Para 3. Uh, a little shorter than the PM2, little tiny bit longer than the Para 3. Nowhere near as tall though, right? So if you've been carrying these guys, the Cogent is probably gonna be a somewhat similar pocket bulk experience. Not the thinnest thing in the world, but it's also nowhere near the thickest knives that are the same size um, in, this, in this category. I mean, even knives that are thicker that are carryable, right? So I don't really have a problem with this, and I think most people, you know, also probably won't unless it's illegal. Check your local laws for blade length. They matter. Um, if you don't want to, you know, get in trouble, which I personally, I don't. I, I like, you know, existing the way that I currently am, which is in my home and not in jail. Anyways, uh, let's go ahead and do a hardware check on this guy. Get out my tools as per usual. My tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about my tools. That pivot is almost certainly going to be a T8, and it is. The hardware, I believe, is also going to be a T8, and that is also true. Everything except for the pocket clip screws, which I'm not gonna check, those are T6. That's great, thank you, Suvivi, with continuing uh, on that trend of the right size uh, fasteners. Let's go ahead and measure blade stock thickness. Where's my calipers, there they are. I'm gonna guess this is like 115 thousandths, 110 thousandths. Oh, almost right on the money. It says 117, I bet it's 115 thousandths. It's pretty typical for Sabini. It's gonna create for a nice slicey edge considering the height of the blade. Um, so there you go. And then weight on this guy, hmm. 3.7 ounces is my guess. I'm getting oddly specific. Fairly close, 3.84 uh, inches of, uh, oh, I'm sorry, 3.84 ounces. Did I measure the cutting edge? <laughs> I don't know that I did, did I? Three and a half inch blade. Okay, so I mean, we're somewhat close to the whole ounce and inch thing, so there you go. Let's talk about this knife. Wow, um, so Civivi uh, has been listening 
people like the button lock elementum, but the thing for me that was, I mean, like it was cool, but the thing that was frustrating was like, like I don't want to use the button as the means of deployment, right? I mean, it's just a gravity thing. Uh, obviously, the Protect Malibu is one of the dr main driving forces behind the button lock craze right now. Everybody wants the Malibu. Or if you don't want the Malibu, that's fine. But a lot of people do. Like that that angry flood of people is going to keep kicking in doors to grab that thing uh, every time that it drops, right? And it is a good button lock. Um, for whatever reason, I find this... I find this so strange. So many companies have either ignored that trend completely or they've made some real sloppy attempt at it and it just didn't go over well. I think it's pretty straightforward what people want. They want a knife that's really similar to the freaking Malibu, right? I mean, it can be its own thing. Obviously, this is not the Malibu. It's its own thing. But it is fairly similar in overall size. Different profile, right? And it operates roughly the same way. There's a button that retracts the blade, and then there's a flipper tab. And it has that same... I've owned the Malibu, and I've handled countless versions of it. Um, yeah, it feels very similar. <laughs> um, in fact, I, you know, I mean, the Malibu is a higher quality knife. That's a U.S.-made one, right? And it does feel a little bit higher quality, but it's pretty darn close. Those of you who have been trying to get your hands on a Malibu... Right? Or you're just really interested in button locks. You just don't want to drop 200 or whatever they want for the Malibu now. Um, this is going to scratch that itch. I usually don't say things like that in the beginning of reviews, but this is going to do it. This is a little bit more tactical. And if you don't want to go all black, I like how this looks, but if you don't want to go all black, they have different colors, right? They have the purples and the greens and they have the, you know, I think they have a tumbled blade. They have a Damascus version if you want. I don't know why you go with that one when you can get... Um, what this is, which is 14C28N. Wow, thank you, Sabibi. Um, but yeah, you can get all that if you want to. And we, by using that link down below, it should take you to everything that's available. So the handle uh, or the ergonomic lines are pretty straightforward. They are comfortable. They lock you in and they're not too aggressive. So you have a little tiny bit of room to move around, choke back and choke up without having some peak dig into your finger. Once again, the only thing that's really digging into your hand is this pocket clip that Civivi insists on using. That gooseneck thing, right? Yeah, you could take a, a Dremel and just shave that off if you wanted to. Or you could take it off and put an aftermarket clip on. It's not the worst clip in the world. It just is a, it's slightly bothersome to the hand, right? I think um, Civivi needs to create a new universal clip that is shorter. And it starts to drop from here a little further back. And then just it's down and then up slightly and no bill get rid of this part that goes straight that i'm gonna keep saying that um because i really 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 like clips like this these work right anyways uh the uh the handle scale also is is interesting they have a fuller down the center they got a couple of holes some lines here it's not too busy it's not you know crazy where you have like the 80s retro music and just like you know, it's it's not too intense, but it looks good, right? Seriously, the ergonomic lines on this are good. There's a little bit, you're, you're kind of digging into the jimping under this flipper tab right here. But now if I had to use a knife for an extended period of time, like for continuous cutting, I would be pretty comfortable using this with bare hands or with gloves. The jimping is also in the right place and extends out uh, to a useful area on the spine. So I really like that. The button lock is extremely easy to actuate, disengage. This is a fun knife to play with. It's snappy. Push that button. Uh, the blade drops and you get your timing right and it's going to drop right into the handle. That's really cool. On top of that, you know, for people who are like, I ain't need my knife to be no fidget toy. I'm serious. Serious bill doing serious work. I ain't got time for no fidgety button lock. All right, chill out, bro. You can, um, you know, look at this as a means of uh, utilitarian advantage if you want to. It seriously is easy enough, right? You use the flipper tab, you cut with it, you push the button and put it away. That's great. And the other nice thing about a button lock is your fingers are never in the way of the blade when you are 
retracting it, right? On a folding knife, a liner lock, you have to make sure your thumb, and we've all gotten used to this, you have to make sure your thumb is high enough up there to catch that unsharpened portion of the blade before you close it, right? There's also some repositioning of the hand, which slows you down a little bit, right? So if you're really <laughs> trying to maximize the amount of work you get done in any given amount of time, right? You, you're going to be slightly ahead. You're going to be able to get to your, your Gatorade at the end of the day, uh, you know, up to 10 seconds faster <laughs> at the end of a work day, right? So, yeah, I mean, it depends on how you look at it. I like button locks, um, plunge locks in this case. I don't think we have to worry too much about strength. I mean, you know, if you're like, well, but wait a minute, Complex. I'm somebody who uh, splits cinder blocks in half with my pocket knife. Is that going to be for me? No. In fact, no knife is for you. Use a different tool. Don't do that. Um, but yeah, like for knife stuff, you're going to be just fine, right? For dumb people stuff, like, you know, using it as a grappling hook, pry bar, hammer, right? Uh, a means uh, of, uh, you know, digging a hole or a trench, right? Those are all tasks that would require other obvious tools that have been around you know, those tools are just laying around going, hey, we were made for this like hundreds of years ago, so use us for this stuff and not your pocket knife. My God, I can't believe. Seriously, some of the comments I read, absolutely ridiculous. Anyways, we have a nice clip point blade. I really like the blade here. Nice, uh, the, the, the grind is very high, so we have a small flat right up here, extending, uh, what is this, 45%, can we focus here? It's the finish on the blade. The camera's like, I can't see it. Uh, almost 50% the length of the blade, right? And then there's a swedge up here. Nice tip. Definitely a capable poker, right? Nice and thin behind the edge. Nice and thin. Making great use of 14C28 and steel. That Sandvik, the most, uh, you know, the, the most coveted budget steel. Nice fine grain structure for not being powder formed. Stainless. Very tough, which is I think that's I think that's really really important for a budget knife to have a tough steel because these are despite my whole jokey look you should use a knife for knife stuff right people are gonna beat beat on these a little harder they're they're less expensive than the you know <laughs> than the more expensive knives that people are less likely to beat on despite them being designed you know to stand a lot of them being designed to stand up to abuse. Uh, these are the knives that are actually going to get, you know, for, I mean, I'm not saying people don't use expensive knives. Like if you think that, if you think that everybody who buys knives that cost two, three, four, five hundred dollars, a thousand dollars, you think that those knives aren't being used. Some of them aren't, but a lot of them are. I'm one of those people who carries, you know, I, I like to carry budget knives and I like to carry more expensive knives. I'm going to use them, right? Um, but, uh, as far as like the vast majority of the time, like these knives are being bought in massive quantities and they're being used. Uh, in massive quantities, right? So it's nice to have a steel composition that emphasizes toughness, balancing pretty good edge retention, corrosion resistance, and oh my God, 14C28N is so easy to sharpen. This really is an excellent steel. And in my opinion, it is the best choice all the way around for most people. Some people are gonna need a more specialized steel. 14C28N will get the job done for the vast majority of people. I think that's great. The blade, I have no issues. Because of the flipper tab and a lack of a forward choil, which people consistently tell me is not a term that exists, I don't care. If it doesn't exist, I'm going to do the, what everybody has done in, in, you know, in history when it comes to the English language, and I'm going to make a new word, uh, forward choil, right? So uh, you are, I don't know, a little more than half an inch away from that. Still pretty good. I mean, you can still, if you hold it kind of like this and get it at an angle, you can you can get some heavy pressure uh, into a cut. So thick cardboard and rubber and stuff like that, not going to be that big of a deal. Fit and finish on this guy is excellent. So if you did what they usually do, which is a really good job. Everything, the seating of everything is great. I'm not experiencing any stick with this guy. Some people get stick with their button locks. If you're experiencing stick, just keep using it. It might take a few days, a few weeks, maybe even a few months. It will go away, okay? I, it will go away, I promise. Um, but uh, yeah, really good. Um, the uh, back area here, we have a couple of standoffs and a lanyard thing so that you can tie a lanyard off to it. I think that's a great way to do that because we don't have to look at a big stupid hole, uh, you know, for the 99.9% .9 of us who are not using lanyards on our knives. We don't have to look a hole. 
Uh, but for those people who do want to carry a lanyard, you, you have a place back here, and it's in a good spot, so I like that. I really wish that they had milled a slot for the pocket clip. I, I don't really care. <laughs> I just complained about, you know, I'm like, I don't want to look at a big stupid hole, but definitely mill a slot out for the pocket clip. <laughs> I don't mind look for on, on the uh, opposing side for left-handed people, right? Um, there should be, you know, like that's that's where we'd have to look at it. It's a slot milled out here. Um, but they didn't. They put it on top. And you know what? It holds It holds just fine. Left-handed people are not really going to have an issue manipulating this because instead of your thumb, uh, right-handed people are going to use their thumb. Left-handed people are just going to use their index finger. And as you can see here, I'm a uh, right-handed person. I have no problem manipulating that. So it's not technically a left-handed button lock, but I think um, left-handed people will be just fine. Lock up. Boy, it really is solid. I really expected it to have some uh, some play in some direction. It's solid. Uh, I'm serious. No pivot lash. <laughs> no, uh, boy, not even any detent lash, which is not really a true detent because it uses the plunge lock, right, as far as I know. Yeah, it uses the plunge lock as that sort of, right, this right here. That's the plunge lock sliding into position. Nice and snappy, right? How's the centering? It's dead on. This is just a freaking home run, man. Like, Civivi, you know, th this is the type of stuff that we want to see. Uh, or at least the stuff that I want to see. Because I am sick of D2 G10 liner locks, right? And it's like, oh, every now and then they have a 14 C28N, you know, thing. They uh, here lately have been doing some different things, right? They've got that multi-tool one, and they got the one with the two. Pick. That's kind of neat, right? They're, they're screwing around doing some different stuff. I like that. This is really cool. If I were Civivi, I would be going, okay, we got one that works, at least in my opinion, right? If they care about what I think. I'm not, I don't speak for everyone, right? But if you're here, you probably want to know what I think. This is the coolest thing that Civivi has ever ever released and it is absolutely one of the best knives of 2021 the best part of this is this knife comes in at 69 dollars giggity uh but that's still a budget knife in my world 75 dollars or less is what i call a budget knife right so this this uh, does actually qualify for budget knife of the year um Wow, I love this thing. I, I love it. There's a couple of, like, I wish the liners were countersunk. I wish we weren't dealing with this goose bill, right? Um, and I, I don't know. I wish I could get a little closer to the cutting edge, but oh my goodness. Um, like, this is so good. This is such a good knife. I'm, you know, I wish it was, it was a little bit less expensive, but it's 14C28N and it's a button lock, right? Am I willing to pay a little bit more than I think? Like, I think this probably should have been priced at $59. Oh, I'm going to have to pay $69. Nope, I can't do it. No, I, I'm i okay with that. This is a good knife. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm seriously really happy with this. This is excellent. If I were Civivi, I would be thinking, okay, we got a good one here. Now... What other what other cool budget button lock designs can we create? Because people want these, Civivi. Not everybody, but people will want these. These are cool and they're convenient. They're it's one it's it's a nice balance between it's fun to play with. It scratches that itch. A lot of people who are watching they they like their knives to also kind of be a fidget toy, but it's also very convenient. This is a convenient knife. You know, get the blade out, cut push a button and it's, you know, we're not fussing around too much. You can save the fussing around for sitting on your couch watching Squid Game or whatever, right? There's, is that, uh, sorry, is that, uh, is that on topic right now or is something else? I don't know. Um, but uh, yeah, this is great. Sabibi really hit a home run with this. This is extremely, extremely recommendable, right? If you don't like button locks, well, then you, you know, maybe this isn't for you. If you're even remotely interested in button locks, I mean, even without this being a button lock, this would be a good knife. This is just a good knife design. It works, but it also has a button lock. Um, <coughs> yeah, I am a, I'm a huge, huge fan of this. I think this is really, really good, and I think most people who pick this up will be very happy with it. So, this will be going in my most recommended knives playlist, as well as my cheap knives I like playlist. And it is definitely a candidate for budget knife of the year. 
So, thank you again, Savivi, for sending this in. It's very likely that this, a lot of people are like, he's just saying that because he got a free knife. A free knife doesn't buy anything on this channel. <laughs> <laughs> I've given negative reviews to knives that were sent to me for free that cost 10 times what this knife costs. Uh, no, a free a $60 knife or a free $70 knife does not buy a positive review. Um, this knife will be given away in any case, so it's not something that I'm going to keep. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with how I do that, usually on live streams, I give knives away that it were sent to me for free by manufacturers because I'm not really interested in hoarding stuff. I just like to give my thoughts. So... If you're not subscribed, subscribe, because I do that quite often. Anyways, thanks again to Savivi for sending this in. Uh, please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe, because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.